Hey, yo, guys, it's Guido coming at you the Tactics Talk and a tank review of uh, four tanks, actually. The ones that people could just build in the Clan War. So we've got the IS-5, we have the KV-4, Kreslov we have the Chieftain T-95, which is the Tier 8 medium version of a Chieftain, all right? Not the T-95, 4201, or whatever it is. The Beast at Tier 10 that's a heavy, this is a medium version-ish of that tank. And then we've got the Tier 7, in this case, T-23E3, which is an American medium. So two Russian heavy tanks, a British medium tank, and then a American Tier 7 medium tank. So we're going to do some snap judgments on this. I played one game in each one of these. <laughs> one game, win or lose. That's what I'm going to show you. These were things you could build for the last Clan Wars challenge thing that they did. And they're rentals for me. So a lot of these have already been out. I just wanted to kind of throw those out there here there here everywhere whatever i'm trying to say throw these snap judgments out and we'll see what we come up with on these tanks so the is5 itself a couple interesting things about this is decent penetration very derpy gun but 221 on the penetration with apcr as standard and then with the heat round all the way up to 300 or 270 which is decent for a tier 8 heavy not amazing but pretty darn good 2,250 on the DPM, that's not bad, but there's that derpy .42 and 293 on the aiming time. Minus 5, gun depression is in, okay, but not amazing, and it does reload fairly quickly at 10.4. Realize that unlike my other longer reviews, this is with my crew in it. So you can see I've got a 4 skill crew working on their 5th skill, so the numbers you're seeing over here are in accordance with that. 1,500 hit points. The whole armor is actually pretty good. It's a pike nose, as you can see. The lower plate's quite weak, though, but some thick 120 with all the angling. And guess what? The side is 122. That's actually 120. 120 also, which is really nice for side scraping. Turret is decent at 201, but it is highly angled, so you'll get some bounces off of that, obviously. And then you've got the weak spot turret at the top. But again, look at that giant lower plate on the pike nose. That's the thing you're going to want to avoid being seen. Mobility is decent doing 42, not quite IS-3 fast, but not really a sluggish heavy either. Doing pretty nicely with that, and you'll see this when I show you the replay on it. View range, as I'm set up at 393, pretty good. And of course, it's a heavy, so concealment's not a big deal. It is a premium, so you're going to have all the modules. I ran a rammer, vert stab, which it can use, and I used improved vents as opposed to going optics. Some people will argue in today's meta with optics, so I think you can, you're good with either one of those. I wanted the vents because I wanted to improve everything about it, give another little tiny boost on the gun. I would also recommend maybe food to help the gun out, and if you used one of the directives for a weapon for gun handling, such as aim tuning or, in this case, stabilizer greasing, because that's what goes with a vert stab. The other one is for a GLD. That will help out with the derpiness in the gun. I think you're going to probably want that. I ran 28 PCR, 8 heat, and 2 HE with large kits and a large fire extinguisher. You could put food on that, but then you are running the risk of potentially fire. But anything you can do to help the gun out is really going to help you with this tank. So let's take a look at my game in the IS. So as I was going to do this in a snap judgment style with no kid and give you the first game, you can check check my... Uh, Check my record. There'll be one game in each one of these tanks, and you're going to see the exact same damage that I am reporting to you and result as well. In the IS-5, because I was doing this snap judgment, I said, all right, well, let's take this thing, and we are top tier. Of course, one thing about playing only one game, if you've got kind of the protected matchmaker thing, usually your first game or two or three is more or less top tier. You're not really bottom tier. That's what I've noted anyway. I think that's actually how it's supposed to be, but... There you go. It's not always true because sometimes matchmaker just can't make that happen. But in any event, these all happen to be more or less top tier kind of battles. So here I am top tier. I'm going to go actually go up to the northeast and I want to just be a bully. So I looked at the enemy lineup. I said, all right, Chrysler GF IS-22 T-34. I don't really expect the T-34 to be up here. He could. Maybe the IS-22, maybe the Chrysler. But I look down into the map and I'm seeing that they're all down the pit of doom. So I am going to be the big bully tank. I'm just going to drive up and over here. The 1357, who has trolled up and over that ridge, let me know there's nobody here to shoot me in the side. I'm seeing a Comet, not afraid of him really. So we're just going to go ahead and be bully tank. So I called this one, It's it's got good armor, maybe. <laughs> okay, so one game. And I'll tell you what I mean by, as I go here. Because when you have somebody say, hey, it's a tier 8 with good armor. 
The problem with that is that's covered up a bit by the tiering system. You know, a good armored tier eight is going to get eaten alive by a ten. It's probably going to be handled by a nine and an eight hitting gold, or even a seven hitting gold. Blah blah blah. So it becomes kind of a situational thing. It's better than not having it, but is it all that? Well, let's find out. The FV forty two hundred one I figured was probably going to pen me if he had any idea what he was doing. So he fires his first one regular AP. He's got great gun depression. I'm going to struggle right here, and that's one thing you're going to struggle with with a minus five. These kind of situations here are a bit of a bummer because I can't get my gun up on him, which means I have to come up and over that hill, expose that weak lower plate just to get into a firing solution on this guy. And I felt like we were really coming in there, so I think he tried to track me. So we'll come over here and we'll just blap one. Close in, the derpiness of the gun stops mattering. I'm thinking somebody will surely kill this Comet. I'll just ignore him for a minute. I'm going to wait for that aim. Watch as I just kind of all right, aim, 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 aim. There we go. So we get one into his lower plate. And no one's killing the Comet, so I figured just a little love tap should take this guy out. There we go. I'm a nice big heavy tank. That does expose me to a side shot by the FV. I'll put another one into his lower plate. And now let's just go ahead and wiggle jiggle. See if we can make a miss. There we go. So we can know they're bouncing. And we've, we've bounced 1,330. All of them AP, it appears. All of them from relatively small caliber tier 7 tanks noted that's why i say things like it's got good armor maybe and then that happens i'm going down i'm wiggling that's the nice thing about a pike nose is if you can make them miss a little bit and hit the side of the pike nose they don't want to hit or keep them from hitting the lower plate or simply just create a weird angle for them you can often get those kinds of bounces now that now brings us to the idea of it's maybe good armor because eventually you're going to run into what I'm running into now, the camping TDs. <laughs> the Charioteer with actually pretty fantastic standard pen. The Scorpion with decent pen and pretty good gold pen, which it looks like he already just fired AP at me, so that helped out. The Artillery taking shot at you and more or less ignoring Artie. More, ignoring Artie. Ignoring uh, armor. I'll figure the A word out in just a minute. And, of course, there's that Derpy gun. I'm just going to shoot on the run. I can't hit that silly thing. I wish I was not firing gold ammo as I was just taking those. I'm able to bounce that one, but I do not bounce the second one. And that's the IKV putting a little shot into me. All right. So he's got a bit of an angle there. He's actually able to pen me. He fired heat. So that's going to help him out. We'll come up here and we'll take on this charioteer. And I'm just basically in bully mode right here. Take a shot on the charioteer. And I push him just a little too much. Challenge the scorpion G a little too much. And boom, there goes the charioteer taking me down. So really at the end of that battle, relying on my armor too much. So relying on it up in the northeast where a bunch of tier 7s had a hard time hurting me. I'm able to wiggle jiggle at medium to long ranges and get some bounces and things. But once I get in close against two, relatively, especially accurate in the case of the chari charioteer, relatively accurate in the case of the scorpion. You know, if a scorpion is just sitting right there and doesn't have any kind of movement, his dispersion is really good. Anytime he moves, it's horrendous. Uh, you know, we're not reviewing the Scorpion, all right? So I don't want to get into how much that thing drives me crazy <laughs> when I'm driving it. But as you can see, once you get close in and they're able to pick apart some of your weak spots or just simply overmatch the armor that's not really uh, that good when you're close. Plus, I had a bit of an angle, so I wasn't really moving either since I was tracked. A lot of things going on there and they're able to kill me off. 1,536 1, damage. 2,600 bounce, which is pretty decent. 726 assist. And really, this played out exactly as I would have thought if I'd have guessed at the beginning how an IS-5 would play in a situation like this, which is relatively permissive. I didn't run into any of their 8s until later on when we are in cleanup mode. This is what I would have pretty much expected. Had I gone down into the pit, I probably could have helped the IS-3 and the T-29 take on the other Tier 8s. Pretty much no problem, but I think the North might have ended up losing or at least would have been a stalemate at this point. So really, based on how this map turned out or this match turned out, I probably could have went either way and we'd have won this game. All right, so I don't think it's necessarily the, t the tank, but you see that in the right situation, it does have some decent armor. The gun is relatively nice in pen, even though it's a little bit derpy. So there you go. And fairly mobile for a heavy tank. So snap judgment on the IS-5. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It's not amazing. It's not overpowered. I don't think you would put it in front of a lot of other tier 8s, say a Defender or something like that, calling it a better tank. But it's actually not that bad. 
it sort of has a feel for of the prefer, preferentials, but it's really got the capability because of the extra pen that it carries around to fight at the higher tiers. So there you go, IS-5. Let's move on to the KB-4. All right, next up is the KV4 Kreslavsky, 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 something like that. The Kress, all right, KV4 Kress. So it more or less resembles a KV4. I actually happen to like the KV4. If you looked at it and went, ooh, a really hard KV4 variant with something better, right? Maybe it's faster, got a better gun. Well, not really. Not, not really. It is quite slow. Uh, the gun is interesting, though, because it's the 107 and... I don't pay too close attention to the tiering thing that they have here. Uh, the IS-5 was showing a tier 8 gun. This shows a tier 9 gun. It does have some more capability though at 227 and 289 with gold, although it's firing APCR for its gold. Some people will like that over the heat of the KV-5 there. You can see that it's 320 average damage per shot or alpha and 227 like I talked about in the penetration, but look how fast it reloads. That gives us a 2058 DPM. So. The DPM on the KB-5 is better. Isn't that interesting? Uh, sorry, IS-5, not KB-5. The DPM on the IS-5 is better because it's got such a higher average alpha, or how, yeah, higher average alpha, average damage per shot at 390. So this thing trades off, I don't know what exactly, because it comes out with less damage per minute, less DPM, and has similar kind of pen very interesting. In fact, I think it's a little bit lower, 270, maybe it's slightly higher at 289. Is that right? There you go. Slightly higher pin. So really that's what it's buying. 70 less alpha on it, even though it reloads faster. But like I said, comes out with less DPM. The write-up from the propagandists at uh, Wargaming says that you, you fight it like a Lurva. Well, that, I think that's old information as far as it being a sniper. The Lurva's armor is just way better than this thing, especially the way it's set up. You can see that this is 180 on the hole, which sounds pretty good, but it's really flat. And then it's 180 on the turret, again, flat. So not amazing. Plus, it's got the uh, weak spot up top there. It's got decent side scraping capability with 125 on the side. And the side turret armor is actually fairly thick. So it's going to take a bit of punch to go through that. A, a tier, uh, what, six is not, not going to, especially a medium, isn't just going to run up and start pinning the snot out of you with those numbers. They might actually need to go to gold. And if you have any kind of angle, that's going to be nice. So like any tier 8 heavy, it does pretty well if it's top tier facing tier 6 right there. And it's relatively slow. If we get down here, we're talking about 30 or kilometers an hour. And that's that's rather painful. With uh, abysmal concealment, and I've got 397 on my view range. The way I set it up was a rammer, vert stab, and I think it is vert stab, that's correct. <clears throat> and improved vents, much like I did the IS-5 carrying all kinds of ammo so you can carry as much of whatever you want here there's no way you're going to run out of ammo in this thing 75 ap 18 apcr i believe is what i put in there and 10 he even though the he is not amazing out of a 107 because that's what it is the little 107 that's kind of like the the kv4 107 slightly more accurate i didn't talk about the accuracy but we're up here at minus seven depression which is okay better than the is5 2.66 aim and 0.35 dispersion was a little bit surprising because it feels like a little bit more accurate gun to me than that. And it may be a case that as it moves, it doesn't lose too much. Although the write-up says it does. So I didn't really see that in game. I actually kind of like the accuracy on the thing. Didn't bother me too much at all. And about a nine second reload right there. So there's the numbers, man. Let's see how this thing plays and we'll get a Guido snap judgment on it. All right, Kreslovsky, KV4 Kress. Top tier once again, this time happens to be all tier eights and spawn into Serene Coast in the northeast spawn. And we're going to head down here. And I said, well, let's go see what this thing can do in a bra. I looked over at the enemy and I said, Defender, all right, that's that's problematic. 112, Emil, 101. Okay, I think I've, I can pen him, depending on if I can get to the right spots. The rest of them are medium, so this looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and head this way. Unfortunately for me, this particular match ends up working out a, a bit different than I thought it might. I don't really get the brawl down here that I thought I would get. You can see how many tanks are starting to show up on the red side over there in the northwest. And I've got a Type 59 ahead of me, and they're seeing nothing. Right here, I should have turned around. 
Should have headed back, but I was added in my mind that I'm going to go brawl and see what the uh, KV-4 can do in a heavy brawl. But unfortunately, the heavy brawl is not going to pan out. Why? Because they didn't come here. <laughs> so unfortunately, what I'm going to end up having happen here, and I'll show you what I'm doing with my camera, is I am going to um, try to force the game to be the way I want it to be, even though it's clearly showing that it's not going to be. And unfortunately, when you do that in a big slow tank, like the KV-4 Cress, you're going to be out of the fight. Look how many guys are stacked up up there on the red team. The defenders there, the Type, the 40T, the Progetto, the IS-22, the 112. Holy cow. I needed to already be turning back, going up that hill and turning that corner. But we'll go ahead and see how I did because I said I'd do one game in each one of these. And I just blindly and stubbornly move forward. I figure, well... We're probably screwed either way. This thing's so slow. I'll turn around, maybe get some more damage later on. But for now, we got some guys to shoot. So I'll just come up this way. And just look at the action on this. It's actually not bad. So I sneak one right into his lower plate. That works out. Got that relatively quick reload. So you're going to be right back in the fight. More like a medium kind of timing. And I actually sneak one right into that weak spot and we take that guy down. So I get hit by the 6x6. Six six, and now I'm just trying to turn back around. He's down in the pit, and they've completely won, and the game's basically over. I, I went to the wrong side. I didn't re react fast enough. I don't think I would have been able to react fast enough, but I might have already been up there with the Emil trying to hold them off for a moment. Then I see a shiny object, Squirrel. We can go ahead and shoot Artie because that's always fun. And off we go. Notice I was shooting gold as far as taking on the 101, but might as well take advantage of that pretty good gold penetration at 289 so I'm looking for maybe some prayer shots between there and the problem is they kind of saw me turn around <clears throat> I'm really hoping as I top this ridge here I don't get spotted because I know there's a Sioux 130 back there and God knows what else and right here I'm thinking well this is going to suck because I'm sure one of those yep there's one there's the other thank goodness the second one did not pen me so I only eat one shot the WZ bounces, you can see that shower right through the flat of the back of the turret. No surprise there. It's about 935 damage. And one of the reasons I, I'm actually glad I'm showing you this battle is just because of its slowness, that is definitely going to be a limb fact with this tank. That's any slow tank in the game. But just so you know, this thing is a relatively slow heavy, and you are going to run into games like this where you simply went to the wrong place, and you're going to have a hard time getting back, especially if you make the determination to go back late like I did. So I get, I'm get a little bit bummed here. I was hoping I'd get a shot into the top of that defender because that's really about the best armor profile that dude was going to show me. Fortunately, I don't get it. And then here comes the uh, Emil. I take a hit from somebody. He's not reloaded. I kind of like this cheeky, sneaky little shot I was able to get there on the 59. I, I kind of like the actually of this thing. I'm wiggling a little bit, trying not to uh, get murderized. And I bounce one off the top of the Emil and down I go. So 1,265. I actually managed to bounce 1,540 and 59 assists on that, the singular game and the KV-4 Cress. I think snap judgment-wise, what you can say about this is the gun's actually pretty nice. Even though it's got a relatively low DPM, it does spit shells down range pretty quickly. I always like tanks that can do that. I wish this thing had a little bit more punch and a little bit more DPM because that would help its slowness. There's really nothing... Counter, counteracting for balance the uh, the slowness of the tank because it doesn't have great DPM and it doesn't have great armor. It's kind of mediocre armor based on the way it's set up and the way the game is played and it speeds terrible plus it has low DPM. So I, really it's hard to recommend this other than as kind of a niche, not even a niche really because I don't know what its niche would be. <laughs> a collector's tank, let's call it that. We'll call it a collector's tank at best there, all right? So if I was to choose between the, at this point, I've only done the two, the IS-5 or the KB-4 Crest, I would take the IS-5 any day of the week. So that's Guido's snap judgment on it. It's not terrible. It's just not that interesting. It doesn't really bring anything good to the fight. <laughs> Nothing that you would go, wow, that's the cool thing that the Crest does. All right, let's move on to the next. The third one, we're going to do the Tier 8 British Medium, the Chieftain slash T95. And I thought this was interesting here. 
It allowed for the interchangeability of guns with the US T-95 tank by means of exchanging turrets. So I'm assuming that's an American turret, or at least design American design turret. Very interesting. So th this was an interesting one because, you know, it's got great depression at minus 10. The loading's at 7 seconds. I'm sorry, rate of fire is 8.57. Loading at 7 seconds, which is pretty good. Standard 240 alpha, pretty typical uh, alpha for a tier 8 medium tank in the game. The aim time is okay at 2.06 and there's dispersion. And again, this is with a pretty good crew. is only at 0.34. So the accuracy left something to be desired. And it's I think it's the place where this falls down a bit as far as a British medium goes, because they have really pretty accurate guns. I'm assuming that's an American 105 that's on there. It's the 90T208 rifle. So a little bit of a accuracy debuff on this thing. 0.34 is not great. 2056 is okay DPM for a medium. 1400 hit points. Whole armor is average at 85. It is angled. So in the right situation, it can be okay. But the turret armor is 254, which is really nice and in a weak spot of the little uh, tumor up there. And that's unfortunate because that's probably one of the biggest problems. That looks like the same kind of turret that, say, the Renegade has up there. So definitely going to be a weak spot. Anytime you're coming up and over trying to use that juicy minus 10 gun depression, first thing the enemy is going to see is that. <clears throat> well, there you go. So that is going to limit the 254 armor although it is nicely angled so pretty good for straight on right there you will get some bounces off the turret and it will be hard to hit relatively anyway this thing at medium to long range although it is a quite a large weak spot as the weak spots go right there it is 42 top speed that's kind of slow for a medium it does feel a bit sluggish 15 reverse again kind of slow traverse is good their concealment is regular medium, and the view range is nice, though. At 451, with the setup that I have, is actually pretty darn good for the uh, Chieftain T95. So let's take a look. Up oh, first, how did I set it up? I had a vert stab. I had coated optics on this one. So my mediums, I'm generally moving to coated optics, vice the vents. Typically using vents on the heavies, but not always. And then I've got our medium caliber rammer. I, you can do almost anything you want with the ammo. There's so much ammo. It runs AP at 62. I had APC, APCR, 14 of those, and 4 HE for giggles, just because there's so much of all this. Large kits, large fire extinguisher. And you come over here to the gun, and we're talking about uh, 202 pen, which is kind of anemic, actually. And then only 238 with APCR. And that, that is a bit rough for a medium tier 8 tank, to be quite honest on that. So, <clears throat> relatively slow. Good gun depression, but a big tumor on top. Not great pen and only 240 alpha. This thing is trying to be kind of the the uh, jack-of-all-trades tank, to be honest. I think the turret is nice, but again, that weak spot is going to cost you a little bit. So let's take a look how I did on my one game. All right, the match I loaded into here is obviously proc. We spawned into the north spawn, and it is the encounter mode. So I'm going to head over here to the east side and head up the hill. Initially, I thought I might go try to take a poke at the IS-3-2, but I didn't want to get too close. There's only one already. That's a good thing. I decided to really challenge these tanks since I was only going to play one game. I was going to go to, to one of the more challenging spots I could find. So I'm going to go ahead and fight on the north side of this hill right here, looking towards the south on the east side of the battle, and see if I can use the turret, see how the turret works out. I know it's close range, so I am asking a lot of it, especially for the... Uh, getting penned in that hatch or that tumor, the weak spot up there. So I do want to watch out for that. So it is a bit of a challenge on there. And I will uh, get a little sneaky shot into the mod one. And then we'll go ahead and move up here. So we will head up here and see if we can use that turret. I'm really hoping there's nobody already tucked up here, but unfortunately that is not the case. Plus, they're going to send a lot of guys up here. So you're going to, you're going to struggle no matter what you are uh, driving in this case. I do get a bounce from a Progetto immediately, though. So the turret the turret holds on for that. <clears throat> but you can see the Progetto moves up. We have a Centurion 1 right there, which is about the worst kind of tank to find right there. Just trying to pin that thing's turret. We get Artied. I come up. That's unwise. I bounce. I eat a Centurion shot and 515. There's a... Su-130 PM that manages to shoot without getting spotted. So right off the bat, I'm down half my hit points. And that, that doesn't have a whole lot to do with the turret not being great. That just has to do with exposing myself to however many dag daggum tanks are up there. 
I'm able to sneak one in there to the 59, but he actually shoots me back, so I'm all the way down to a one-shot pretty quickly. Get a little bit of assist, and it looks like this guy wants to try to come finish me, but unfortunately, he overextends and just eats all kinds of damage. That works for me. There's some spotting for me up to 747, so we'll just keep trying to push this a little bit. I can see that the uh, IS-2 is in a bad spot. He takes a big hit, so I'm going to get up here and try to finish him, but he dies, and that's actually probably good for me because... Had I continued up there and tried to go for that shot, I bet I would have died to whatever else was camping back there. The Centurion is staying low. That's where he used to stay. The Ice 2 and the Progetto went to exactly the wrong spot to work that place. So you got to stay in the bowl, kind of tucked up where the Centurion is. It does give you, make you a little bit more vulnerable to being spotted by the guys like me, but it keeps you from going too high like the Is 2 or getting too exposed like the Progetto and the Progetto is actually a little bit of armor now so you can see the Type 59 sort of using that got already going there and then I see this guy there's that nice minus 10 I can't quite take advantage of it but he backs out so I'm just going to go ahead and join taking on the Centurion and I'm the one who eats the shot from the T-54 unfortunately and I'm just hoping that he doesn't get another another one off on me right there so we'll just dive down low <clears throat> so there's the good gun depression the turret worked for one bounce, decent accuracy, not amazing, but good. And I'm able to take down the guy that was in the town. The T-54 Mod 1's dead, so I'm not going to get shot again on the side. I am slightly worried about the Artie. I don't want to get seen by anyone still sitting up there, but the IS-3 dies very quickly. And you can see that kind of slowness of the tank. Everything that I did to move around in this thing was, was slower than I would have liked. It felt more like a heavy tank doing its maneuvering vice a medium tank. And I think this is, the tier 10 is a heavy tank, right? So it's all it's all kind of built in the same hole. So it's, it's a little bit mixed up here. Wait for the zoom in. Not bad, right? So there's decent accuracy. It will reload okay as far as speed goes. There we go. So we get two in there and we kill an Artie and the Angel gets its wings and all that good stuff. And we got the IS-6. Now I should have been much more aggressive because I think I missed out on any more damage here. We're actually just going to speed this thing up. We go here. Yeah, I'm at 1211. I don't think I get another shot. No, I don't. So we end up with 1,211, 240 bounced, 887 assist. <clears throat> and the Scorpion dies over in the corner alone and cold in the rain. Turret's good. The depression's nice. The maneuver snap judgment. The, the depression's nice. The turret's okay. Let's see if we can see where I got shot. Did I take any in the... Yes, twice. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you don't need any, to know anything else about the, that weak spot and how it uh, hinders you coming up and over the top of a uh, of a ridge than that. Two shots right into it. <laughs> There's the one that bounced off the nice curved turret, so if you can get them to shoot the turret, you're in pretty good shape right there. Okay mobility, not fantastic for a medium. The, the accuracy is okay. Uh, not fantastic. So really, it, it's a lot like a Centurion 1 with a big tumor on top. And it does, I think, a little more damage. Does a Centurion do 240? I don't remember. It might be about the same. It seems to me the Centurion might be 200 or 220 or something. But in any event, a slightly worse Centurion 1, to be quite honest. Although uh, not everybody has one of these. And it does confuzzle people at, um, at times thinking it's an actual Chieftain. <laughs> but anyway, man. Snap Judgment, there you have it. The Chieftain slash T95 Tier 8 British Medium Tank. Let's move on to the last one, which is actually kind of interesting. For the fourth and final, we're going to do the T23E3. Now, I like probably of these four, I like the IS-5 best, if I was to pick one of the four to keep. Pretty good Tier 8 Heavy Tank, right? Eh, mediocre Tier 8 Heavy Tank. Mediocre Tier 8 Medium Tank. This is a Tier 7, but I'm, I'm not going to say I like it the best, but I think it's the most interesting. I'm going to call it the uh, cheekiest monkey of the four, all right? <laughs> This is the cheekiest monkey of the four. Strange little tank. Seems to be the T20, T21 hull with it looks like to me a Sherman turret because 
One thing you're going to note right off the bat is it's got a 115 average or 115 alpha. Oof. That surprised me. I didn't realize it was that weak of a gun. And when I started pew pewing at a tier 7 battle, I went, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Because <laughs> I was doing 90 and then I got like a, a 105 and I'm thinking, good lord. That's terrible. <clears throat> so 115 alpha. Oof. 149 pen is not great. 190 with gold is okay. Actually, for a tier 7 medium, it's actually pretty good. Rate of fire is fast. It fires quickly. 2.78 on the reload. Boom, boom, boom. It's going to shoot. Gives you 2,478 DPM. What? <laughs> Holy cow. But those are all coming in little chunks of 115. It just fires away, man. Basically, it's the easy 8 gun type of idea. In fact, it probably is. Yeah, a 76. On a tier 7 chassis with, I think, a little more pen. Very strange. Minus 10 depression is great. Aim time is pretty good. Dispersion is okay. Probably one of the biggest arguments against the American 76s is, is the accuracy is actually kind of garbage. You would think it'd be better, but that's something you get when you get down in the lower tiers. That happens. But look at that DPM. <clears throat> Gotta love it. 1,050 hit points is decent. Whole armor is low. Turret armor is less than I thought. At 76 is actually not that good. Mobility. Wow, does this thing scream. It says 56, top speed. It feels faster. It is very agile. It feels like the T21 agility, actually. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more. Good hold traverse. Good specific power. It will get moving quickly. Concealment's okay, actually, for the size of it. And the view range is pretty nice at 451. My setup is coded optics. I had vert stab, and I was running a medium caliber rammer. I had you have ammo for days, so 60 AP, 14 APCR, 10 HE, and I've got large kits and a large fire extinguisher. Didn't run anything else for the one game that I played in it. Good crew. You can see they've got four skills or three skills working on their fourth. So let's take a look at this because it was very interesting. I, I think it was the most unique of these four, other than just the shape and goofiness of this thing, as far as the way it played. Well, as you can see, I did not get top tier on this particular game. The other three I did. I'm middle tier, which means I have some tier 6s to beat up on, some tier 7s, of course, some tier 8s. I'm looking at the Emil and the Tiger and the Brigetto going, oh, man. So not only do I get this map, I get the Norse spawn, so I can't really run down in here into the donut area. It's also the encounter one, so I feel like there's going to be more people kind of contesting the middle, but I say, all right, it's got good depression. Let's see what this thing can do working up here on this ridge. So we kind of immediately come in here. There's that kind of wonky accuracy of the 76. I just take a shot on the run, do a little wiggle jiggle. There's only one artillery, but I don't really want to get hit by it. Just wait a little bit, and there you go. So we get a little shot into the T-37, and he goes down. I'm just trying to avoid any artillery. I see a pretty good push going on into the Dillon, the Progetto, the T-29. I don't want to drive right up and over here immediately because they saw me coming, so somebody may be thinking about it. But let's just kind of protect ourselves from the sniper hill a bit and see if we can't get a little shot on this guy. Unfortunately, I shoot into the rock. Now, I hadn't noticed yet. <clears throat> to be quite honest, I did not realize it was only 150 alpha on this thing. And I don't notice that until a little while later. I take that shot, and that's about where I start looking at the damage going, what the? 103, 101. And eventually, I will check it and notice that it's a 115 alpha. And I'm thinking, goodness gracious. The Emil shows up. I know it doesn't have any good turret armor, and I'm right off the bat going, that is not going to work out for me. Probably don't want to do that, so let's go ahead and see if we can't go beat up on this Super Hellcat, who looks to be overextended. We're not seeing anybody else. We have the hill, so I'm going to actually go over here to the east side. I'm going to go wide. I'm going to hope nobody's hugging there, and the AMD hasn't missed anybody so far. But I'm counting noses, and I'm thinking not. If there is, there might be one. Look, and then I notice how fast this thing is. I'm thinking, wow, look at this thing move out. I mean, we are cruising along. We're doing 55. Nice gun depression. We'll just come up over here and find this Hellcat. He has no idea what's going on. He's shooting at the guy above him. <clears throat> Before he really notices what's happening, he's dead from Cromwell B. Got a case of the Cromwell B, and I'll just keep pushing. We've got a bit of a nice advantage going on. We have one, two, three, four of them kind of stuffed over on the west side, and then we have about four of them up by the cap. And the good news is we have them busy with our own guys at the cap. So if I can work around here, we might be able to get some shots in their back. Not to be careful because if I keep 
If I go too far here, I'm going to expose myself to the S1, which I know is probably sitting up there, and we'll find out that's where he is. Take a little bit of effort trying to get a daggum shot right there, spazzing out a little bit. I do get spotted, sneak one into him, but he's getting all kinds of aggro from people. Looks like I shot my own guy in the back of the head. They take down the Super Hellcat, so I've backed out from the S1. I feel fairly safe from him. Then we got this Tiger 2. There's a 134. Look at that high roll, nice sweet high roll. Another one, 98 that time, though. <laughs> and a bounce off the side. And he's going to start turning his front armor to me. And that's just a bad shot. I needed lead fire. If I'd have just led him towards the rear a little bit more, I would have had another 100-something damage. And I don't know if the Emil's actually shooting at me or at the Carnarvon. I sneak a big 114 wallop. <laughs> I'm going to end up with 1,600 damage, but it takes a lot of shots to get there, folks. <laughs> We're only halfway there. We're only halfway there. A good portion of their tanks are stuck down in the bottom, as is a good portion of ours. The good news is we've done better up top than they have, so we've got a nice advantage going. I'm just going to use this thing's mobility here. Look at that running snapshot. That's just pure RNG right there. I knew I was going to get spotted pretty quickly, so I'm just going to come raging in here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit, get hit by the S1. Turns out I don't, actually. So I'm just going to a little wiggle jiggle, but look how fast I'm closing this distance. It's fantastic. Snapshot doesn't go anywhere because the accuracy is terrible. That one, no idea how I snuck it in. Must have got up underneath him somehow. And now I'll just keep moving in here. Got to watch out for the Hummel. And I am spamming gold, folks. That is absolutely true. Like I said, I was only going to do one battle, so I took the advantages that I could. I see the Artie. Oh, very nice. Artie apparently sees me. He's looking for me. You can see his kind of gun moving around, thinking, all right, how am I going to shoot this guy? Don't really know why I'm going to hold down, but he misses, thank goodness. Shoots really short. And then I get Artied by the E2. Not Artied, but HE'd by the E2. Plan on taking him down, but he gets killed by somebody else. A little spotting, so I'm up to 1364, 994 assist. And then I find this guy. And once you zoom in with this little 76, it's actually decently accurate if you let it completely zoom in. Much like any gun in the game, to be quite honest. And we down this guy. So we end up with 1,630, 1,375 assists, no kills, and a win on Cliff. So snap judgment. I, you know, it's a weird little tank. It's like a, it is a tier 7 Sherman, easy 8, with a little bit better uh, hull. I mean, it's just faster, right? Interesting little tank. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, it's a cheeky little monkey. That's the best thing I can say about it. At tier seven, I mean, if it if it ended up fighting a T20, it would probably be in a hurting status pretty quickly. Although to be honest, it's going to pew pew the living snot out of you. So if you can take advantage of the 115 Alpha gun that shoots that fast, there are certain situations, especially in perma track situations, support situations, things like that, where this is really a very interesting little tank, right there. All right, so that's my snap judgment on the T23 E3. I believe is what it is. Yes, T23E3. All right, guys. A snap judgment on the four vehicles that you could build. I believe that's all four of the vehicles that you could build. Top of the litter, I think, is pick of the litter. It's going to be the IS-5, at least for me. does pretty much everything you would want a heavy tank to do. It's not the best, it's not an Object 252, but it's a solid Tier 8 heavy tank. This is more a collector's item. Uh, I don't really know what it can do good other than be goofy looking. <laughs> I mean, if you're a good player, you're going to make anything look good. And this is probably one I would need, to be quite honest, uh, uh, 20 battles before I started to really see what, it's, what it was all about. But Snap Judgment is, it's mediocre. Alright, not terrible, mediocre. Same thing for this. I like it slightly better than the KV-4 Cress, but I think the Centurion one is just a better overall tank. I think it's interesting. I love the depression. I like the turret. I don't like the tumor. So you're kind of adding some of the British stuff and American weaknesses together, right? You've got that you know British depression and relatively slow medium tank thing going on with a strong turret, but then you add the American tumor on top. And I don't know, the combo is not a great one, but it is an average tier eight medium premium price tank, right? Reward tank, that's what it is, reward tank. 
This is the Cheeky Monkey. I'm not going to tell you that it's a great tank, but it sure is a lot of fun. And if you can, if you can leverage the DPM on this thing at Tier 7, it can be a beast. And I'm going to say that with, with only playing one game in it. I'm going to say that with only playing one game in it. I know a lot of really good players who actually love this thing, even, even with its warts like a 115 DPM gun, basically carrying the Tier 6. I mean, look at this. Basically carrying the Tier 6 Easy 8 gun, gun up into Tier 8. Or sorry, Tier 7, where it's going to see Tier 9s. That, that's going to be brutal. But it does have some extra pen added on there at 190 to sort of help. But even 190, oof, you, you want to get behind somebody. But if you can get into Permatrack or behind somebody or start cleaning up near deads, this is going to be a little beast. Plus the mobility allows it to get around to do that. There you go. My snap judgment on the four tanks that you can build. That's all I've got, guys. Thanks for coming by, and we will see ya.